During the 1990s and early aughts, the phrase sous vide became synonymous with high-end restaurants, cutting-edge trends in gastronomy and prices to match the guaranteed perfect cook. Sous vide is a French phrase that translates to under vacuum and denotes a cooking process whereby food is placed in plastic or glass and cooked in a water bath at a specific temperature. Where sous vide differs from traditional cookery techniques is the temperature. Cooked for extended periods at much lower temperatures than typically used, the end product is a succulent tender and moist bite of meat or a perfectly tender crisp vegetable. Spices, sauces, herbs and marinades can be added to impart a depth of flavour difficult to attain using other methods. The food never comes in contact with heated metals, smoke, flames or steam and the water never reaches a boil. The gentle cooking process ensures that ingredients are treated with the respect they deserve. But there's a hidden history to the art of sous vide cooking and even a bit of confusion over who has a claim to the title of the father of sous vide. The concept of cooking proteins at a consistently low temperature was first documented in 1799 by physicist Benjamin Thompson. He conducted a series of experiments to determine if meats could be roasted using circulated air as the heat source. It wasn't in a water bath, but the low temperature cooking resulted in meat that was not merely eatable, but perfectly done and most singularly well tasted. There is an alternate origin story for culinary sous vide techniques, and it originates with a military officer. Retired cook Colonel Ambrose McGuckian was hired by AGS Food Systems and was tasked with improving the taste of hospital food. His solution was to portion and cook meals in sealed plastic pouches. Once cooked, they would be flash frozen for storage. When needed, meals could easily be microwaved to reheat. The result was enhanced flavours that tasted fresh, even if it was initially cooked weeks prior. The proof was in the pudding. Literally, patients were happy with their tasty food, and sous vide was proven as an effective tool that was not only functional, but was well received by end users. McGuckin's findings were published in a 1969 issue of Cornell Hotel and Restaurant Administration Quarterly. It detailed the process he had established with the promise of efficiency, a 60-day shelf life, reduced food waste and food full of flavour. Once information about sous vide was readily available in these publications, chefs in professional kitchens began toying with the technique. French chef Bruno Goussault kicked things off in 1971. Looking for a way to improve the tenderness of hefty cuts like roast beef, he found success with sous vide. Three years later, French chef George Prelis discovered how to best work with offal and sous vide. He learnt that wrapping foie gras in plastic while cooking kept the fatty organ meat from shriveling. It ended up with a much more pleasant mouthfeel as an additional benefit. Additional flavour could be gained by creating a vacuum seal, a process sometimes called cryovacking. Chef Goussault continued his culinary experimentation, teaming up with Chef Joel Robichon to craft a dining programme for the French Railroad that capitalised on sous vide preparations. At this point, more and more chefs in France were bringing the practice into their own restaurants. The novel technique began to infiltrate American cuisine as chefs started to experiment with the cooking method. Chief among them was Thomas Keller, the owner of the French Laundry in California's Napa Valley. The primary challenge was that Europe had a jumpstart on how to actually use the technique. They hadn't spent the last 15 to 20 years experimenting and developing best practices. This is where timing was crucial. The time was the early 2000s and the internet had become the de facto place to find shared resources, including sous vide cooking techniques. The forums on the eGullet website were the most helpful, as it was a hub for people to discuss their trials, tribulations and successes. Knowledge spread much more quickly in a few short years than it had over the previous two decades in Europe. More and more talented chefs got comfortable with sous vide, including Sean Brock, Wiley Dufresne and Grant Ackett's. Accessibility for the masses started slowly in 2005 with the arrival of Spanish chef Joan Rocker's book about sous vide. The New York Times published an article demystifying the term for average diners and consumers the same year. The author, Amanda Hesser, wrote that, like the immersion blender, it will probably trickle down to the home kitchen someday. 
This became all too true the following year. In 2006, sous vide was shown on television for the first time. Iron Chef America displayed it when Chef Wiley Dufresne battled Mario Batali. Dufresne lost, but consumers won as demand for in-home sous vide products took off. The price point was challenging for many prospective buyers. With professional equipment costing well over £1,000, it wouldn't be until 2009 that prices dropped below 500 As prices dropped, more and more home chefs added sous vide to their arsenal of tools. Today, sous vide is everywhere. It feels like more home cooks use it than restaurants. YouTube personalities use sous vide to show audiences how to make all sorts of delicious meals, from homemade spam to perfectly done steak. Crowd Learning Giant Masterclass features Thomas Keller himself, extolling the benefits of sous vide cooking, and where there was a single cookbook in the early 2000s, an Amazon search today provides more than 200 cookbook options for aspiring home chefs. Immersion circulators are occupying holiday wish lists and wedding registries and make for great housewarming gifts. The only real drawbacks of this cooking method remain cooking time and the lack of searing capabilities with water bath cooking. Of course, most chefs slice into the bag after the food is ready and have a ripping hot pan prepared to sear the cut on all sides quickly. That solves one of the two issues of sous vide. The other just requires some planning. You can eat a tender steak in about two hours with sous vide. It's a time commitment, but less than some cooking methods and certainly demands less of your attention. What's your favorite use of sous vide cooking? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. Until then, see you in the next video.